Hi there, welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to talk about the Battle of Britain. It's the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Britain. You'll see I've got quite a few kits here that are mementos from the battle. We've got the old Airfix Stuka which I've talked about, done the reviews on previously, Werner, Von Werner's Messerschmitt, the one that got away. We've got the Matchbox Heinkel HE111 which is a nice kit and the one I'm building at the moment which is the Spitfire Mark One. A I'm doing, which is the uh, the absolutely classic Battle of Britain spit fight. Anyway, today I'm going to talk about something new. So we have got to review the Armour Hobbies Battle of Britain Special Limited Edition Hurricane Mark I. Now uh, I've not had any experience of Armour Hobbies before, they're completely new to me. So and I haven't opened this, so it's all completely unknown. Um, so let's get stuck in and have a look what we got. It's a 170 second scale kit, hence the smaller box. So it goes with the uh, the Hankel HE111 rather well, I think. A bit of a dogfight double. A bit of a one-sided dogfight, I know, but you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, let's get let's get cracking, get stuck in, and I'll bring you in for a bit of a closer look at this. So, Armour Hobbies, they're made in Poland. Uh, quite a new manufacturer, they've recently come out with, um, they've got a two, two or three, I think now, different Hurricane variants. So what we got? We got a little bit of a description on the side, say it's plastic kit, English and Polish, uh, kit number 700 and then 23, 70023. And then on the back, and this is where the, the interesting part comes in, I think, quite a few different variants. And you might recognise one or two of these, they might seem a bit familiar. Uh, because they've been covered, one or two of them are quite well-known aircraft. First of all, DTA was of course Stanford Tug. He was a very famous Battle of Britain, Britain ace. Uh, sadly, he was actually shot down. I think I think it was early 1941. I think he was shot down and ended up at um, crash landing or bailing out over Boulogne, Boulogne, and getting captured by the Germans and ended up in a prison camp. But he then. Uh, subsequently broke out and actually made it back to the UK, which was quite impressive. Uh, quite a character was Tuck, tell you a real boy, a bit of an Errol Flynn type sort of chap. <laughs> and then we've got um, John Alexander Kent, another fairly well-known ace. Um, Richard Gleed, now this is an interesting one, A-L-K the markings here. This is the one that was featured on the uh, the old Airfix 124th scale Hurricane Mark 1. So those, those markings may be familiar to many, many people uh, on the 24th scale. And then we've got this GNA, which is the James Brinley Nicholson VC, Distinguished Flying Cloth, another ace from the Battle of Britain. And this marking is the one that the RAF paid tribute to about two, three years ago with the Eurofighter Typhoon, uh, the display aircraft which they, they take all around the UK for various air shows. So again, quite a familiar uh, marking. So some interesting, interesting versions there. So we've got a box that opens at the end, like so. A uh, bit, bit Revel-like, I don't really care for that. I, I say to Armour, no, please have a top opening box. But anyway, let's see what we've got inside. Okay, that's it. So. One bag, I'm not sure about that, but it's basically, well, okay, there's only three sprues, so to be fair, I don't think it's a major problem, I think I'll zoom you out a bit. Not a major problem, because it's just such a small kit. So, let's have a look here. It's a, it's one of these peel open bags, it seems. And what we've got here. All right. Zoom you out a bit more. So, first of all, we have got the instructions. And these seem to be, yeah, quite nice and bright and clear. Uh, shows the sprues, shows the clear parts, shows the decals, gives you, um, it gives you a really good painting guide. Now, if you look closely, I'll zoom in a bit more. If you look closely, this painting guide gives you the equivalent uh, paint options for all the major manufacturers. Hataka, AK, Life Colour, Ammo, Umbral, Vallejo, Tamiya, and then the same for, for the other colours. That is something that 
I think all the manufacturers should be doing now. They should be saying, look, we know that these are all very popular products. You're probably using one or the other. Very few people have got every range. Nobody's going to do that. That's really good. I'm very impressed with that. That's a great start. Um, inside we've got the decals. We'll come to them in a second. And so we seem to have... We seem to have here something about the masks. Have we got masks with the decals or not? Don't see any masks. That's a bit odd. Perhaps I'm missing something here. Yeah. Uh, masks. Mask. Template for masking. Okay. <laughs> I was getting a bit too optimistic. So what it is, it says it's a template for masking and cutting out your masking tape. So unfortunately you still have to do it yourself, but it's a template. So I suppose it's kind of helpful. But, um, but I do like the, the, uh, the paint guide. That's very helpful. Right, let's have a look. What we got? This is a complete new one for me. Let's take it from the top. So, starts well, unusually. It starts off with building the wheel well. Um, box section goes in onto the top of the wings. You glue it to the top of the wings with a bracing piece across. Then you bring the lower half of the main wing down. Then you build your cockpit seat belts. I don't think there's any photo actually included. You, there, is, um, I think there is an alternative version of this you can get, um, I can't think what to call it, Master Edition or something like that, and I think it comes with photo etch. But I think the way that they are portraying it here, it's actually a decal, so it's a bit Tamiya like. Decal again for the instruments, size of the cockpit, building up the, the framework around the main uh, area of the cockpit, putting in your instrument panel. Then we've got, then you've got the two halves, now remember this is only 70 seconds scale, so it's quite a small kit, okay? Two halves of the cockpit sides clamp it together around what looks like quite a detailed cockpit for a tiny model. Then put your tail and tail plane on, uh, horizontal stabiliser, vertical stabiliser, you've got your undercarriage which you've already built in, You've got pedals, etc., which you put in with your sticks. That's quite nicely, that's nicely detailed, isn't it? Then we've got the actual wheels themselves and the uh, radiator intake underneath. All the little intakes and scoops, and the air filter intake, the exhausts, and then we've got the spinner, propeller, options for having the canopy open or closed. That's kind of it really. So then you've got your markings, all nice and clear. I like the way they're presented it. It's quite bright and clear. Um, so, yeah, they're presented that rather nicely, I'd say. Um, Aeroplane has not painted underside roundels by the manufacturer. Most probably they were added in August 1940 according to the regulations. Okay. Not sure how relevant that is in terms of markings, but anyway. Um, and then we've got GNA at the end. So you've got a great and Stanford Tux plane is the last option. So you've got quite a good uh, good options, a nice uh, bevy of hurricanes from the Battle of Britain. But then we've got the markings. Let's have a look at these. Well, I've never seen armor hobbies before, so it's a complete new one on me. They look they look really nice. There's a minimum amount of carrier film. Um, hmm, slightly, some of the lettering yeah, on the L here, that, that could be done better. See if I can catch that in the light so you'll know what I'm talking about here. Can you see the carrier film there, the way it, it sort of dips down, but it's still going to be noticeable, I think, that not contouring with the letter itself. No problems here or here. Just on that L, maybe in the K a little bit as well. So you might want to just trim that with a knife, otherwise it's going to look a little bit odd. But they look very, uh, very bright, colourful. Uh, the yellow looks a little bit, if anything, looks a little bit on the orange side. But I'd say the colours are lovely. And the instruments, this uh, detail of the... Uh, here we've got the seat belts. 
and we've got all the instrumentation. That looks really nice. Very, very fine, very crisp. And I'm going to have to put the glasses on to see this, but I believe that those got trestle details and stencil details. And I think that they are not just gibberish. Yeah, they're, they're, it's proper lettering. And it's very fine. I mean, we're only at 170 second scale. That is pretty impressive. Now, those are good. Those are really good. Nice, nice markings. So, lovely decals there. Okay, so, put that back with the instructions. Now, let's get down to business and have a look at some of these, uh, some of these parts. Let's start off with the clear parts. So, let's have a good look. We've got two different variants of the canopy. Now, I'm not sure one's wider than the other, so I'm not convinced that they're both Mark 1 Hurricane. So, I have a feeling that there may be two versions. I think one might be from the Hurricane 2C. I think the narrow one, in fact. But we shall see. You've got the front armor-plated windscreen, which is really nice very crisp. I mean this is, you know, it's not big and that's that's really nice. Then we've got the second smaller sprue and we've got three different variants of spinner. Now this is where you can tell for sure that uh, we have got multiple versions here. Multiple versions. Uh, these, these are intended for another variant that's not in this kit, but I'm pretty sure that the top spinner is the Mark 1. That would be the Battle of Britain spinner, for sure. So a little bit of trouble with the camera here. I think it's getting a bit too flustered with what's behind it. Let's just get it to focus on other here and now. Come on, there we go. So. Got it? Got it. Yeah, so the top one is the Battle of Britain one. I think one is a C Hurricane, I think, and one is a 2C Spinner. So I think there's three versions. Uh, so only the top one is the pertinent one for this actual kit. Then as we move through down the, the sprue, you've got this lovely tail section. I like the way they've done that, and it's got lovely fine detail. Very, very... Yeah, some people have said, described it as being CAD-like, and I can see what they mean. It's very, very crisp. Very, very fine. And then we've got the weight on wheels, which is great at 170 second scale. That's not something that we normally get much of. You know, not at this scale. And then we've got the seat. And there's a little bit of contour in the seat, which is nice. You know, for a little tiny kit, that's, that's pretty good. And then we've got the main sprue with all the other parts on it, so let's just go a bit wider for this. And what have we got? Well, I'll tell you something, for this scale that is so nice. That's very, very finely moulded. You've got the beautiful ribbing here. Let's go in a bit closer. Fabulous ribbing. We're having a bit of trouble with our focus today. It's because it's got something behind it. <laughs> so there we go. See it now? Yes. Yeah, it's got this lovely ribbing. So sharp, isn't it? Very, very fine. Now that's really nice. For this scale, that's amazing. I mean, you know, a bit of a revelation, I'd say. And we've got the back of the seat, the armor plating behind the seat. And we've got the floor, and then we've got these beautiful propeller blades. And again, there's several variants there, but I'm pretty sure that it's probably these ones for the Mark I. This end. Look at the look at the fine detailing on this uh, this wing. It's really really good. Very very fine. Very crisp. 
crisp ailerons are beautiful, the hatches are all there, gun covers, and then you've got your um, undercarriage wheel covers and the tail uh, elevators and the front of the uh, horizontal stabiliser, it's very neat the way they've done it, it kind of looks like it like clicks in like a uh, like a locking unit. And you've got these detailed exhaust stubs here. It's really nice, isn't it? And do you know what? There's no um, there's no ejector pins. I can't see any ejector pins on any of this. See? Nothing. Nothing on the main parts. I don't know how they've done that. That's incredible. Just see? That is very impressive. And there's some really crisp detail on the inside as well. And there are ejector pins on the inside, but they are nowhere near the areas that are going to be visible. They're much further back over here. Look at the detail here, the ribbing. See that? Yep. So Okay, well it's interesting to have a new uh, manufacturer coming into the hobby, not one I've encountered before. Um, this kit is a uh, limited edition for the Battle of Britain, which is why it's all the, uh, all the aces, <laughs> for Hurricane Aces. Um, it cost me, I think, £15, so it's really cheap, you know. And I've got to say, for £15, it's an absolute winner. That's a beautiful kit for the money. I mean, it's no money, is it, really? I know it's only 177, but the detail and the finesse, it looks, certainly looks like a 148, if not 132 sort of level of detail. Certainly competes with any 172nd scale kit you've ever seen, I think. I mean, I've got a Hurricane Matchbox one, granted, but this is going to murder it in terms of detail. When you put a wash on, I think, look at this, um, which I didn't point out, actually, the one final point. that lower wing. Just look at the crispness of this detail, you know, the the ejector ports for the guns there. Absolutely incredible. That's really, really good. Can't fault it. Well, for £15 I don't think you're going to get anything better for your money. I can't think of a kit that's better value for money than that. Absolutely superb. So, I'd, I'd give it a 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, no question. Um, yeah, it would have been nice if they put some mask in there, but I think, I think masks in the fair to HSA are available in the other, other versions of it. It probably isn't the Battle of Britain version, but they do this sort of an upgraded version, another four or five pounds. So that would resolve that problem. So really, you've got absolute winner there. So that's the Armour Hobbies limited edition Hurricane Mark One to celebrate the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Britain. Absolute thumbs up from me. Love that kit. They love it to build. Really nice, that crisp one, you know. Hope you enjoyed the review. Um, more coming from me uh, in a few days' time. There's going to be a little talk I'm going to do about the Battle of Britain. I'll probably have these in the background. I've got some wonderful books and things to talk about. DVDs that I recommend for those that would like to know more. And a bit of an interesting, perhaps slightly different perspective on the battle. Uh, not, not going to go into a lot of detail because there's just too much, isn't there? But just a, a quick overview and a discussion about what, you know, what went right, what went wrong and what, how the outcome of that conflict could have been so different and the implications it might have had for the rest of the world, especially Britain, um, but indeed the whole world. Uh, we'll talk about that in some more detail later. I hope you enjoyed the review. Thank you for joining me. Please tune in for these others. Um, also for the, the Phantom Flyer, we have got the, um, the comic strip from the Battle of Britain, uh, which is a really enjoyable story and not too long. It's, it's going to be in uh, nine episodes of only about three minutes so one every night from I think it's eight o'clock starts on Friday uh, please tune in for those and uh, I think you'll enjoy them uh, take you back to your childhood a lot of guys anyway <laughs> um, 
and uh, there'll be more videos coming along soon and if you enjoyed this video please like share and subscribe and thank you for joining me and I hope to see you all again